Hello everyone, welcome back to one new video. Today's topic was actually chosen by you. I've had a poll on YouTube. You decided the title of the video, which was how the examiners assess the quality of the PhD and the candidate during a VIVA. Stay tuned until the end of the presentation as I will reveal four very important tips that you can use during the PhD VIVA. So first things first, we'll break down the presentation in three different parts. One is dealing with the actual report. The second is dealing with the presentation that you do during the VIVA. And the third is the actual VIVA, the defense. For all the three steps, I'll give you some insight of how we as examiners assess the students, what we want to see and what we don't want to see. So first of all is the report. Make sure that the report is written in the best possible manner. Try to polish it again and again, perfect it if possible and present it in the best possible way. Try to make sure that it's free of any editorial and language mistakes. The grammar, the syntactic are very good. The quality of the pictures and the figures is excellent and there is consistency in the way that you're writing, in the way that you present things. Don't try to change one word with another one and on the next chapter be consistent in every presentation. That will ease a lot the way that the examiner will read it and uh, it will make him feel very familiar with the report from the very first pages. The devil is in the detail, so make sure that every single detail is perfect. Comment with regards to how many figures, how many tables I should add. I will say that keep the balance, make sure that if you need to add a lot of tables and a lot of figures, just throw them all in an appendix, reference that appendix in that chapter, because if you add a lot of figures and tables, it will break the flow of the thesis. So someone will have to go back and forth all over the time. So equally, do not squeeze too much information. So this is not a paper, certainly is not one of these reports that you need to put too much in one paragraph or in one page. If you feel that below the figure there's just a little bit of space, just leave it empty and start in a new page. I like calling it eye breathing. Don't try to squeeze too much information there. The same thing happens with writing very, very long texts, very long paragraphs are quite exhaustive, so try to make them smaller. Oppositively, don't make them too small, like two, three lines each paragraph, because then it breaks the flow. Formatting correctly and organizing the chapters is the first thing that you need to do, and that will give you the first thumbs up by the examiner unconsciously, the examiner will feel that this is a good report and wants to read it all. Then it is about the story. I'm sure you've heard about this a lot. So you try to have a story, a narrative in your thesis and follow that narrative throughout. You must keep the interest of the examiners high at all times. So make it look like a story where there is a start and an end and someone wants to read through that. So here my comment is do not include everything that you have done in your PhD. A thesis doesn't have to be a reflection of your actual PhD and what have you gone through. There might be some byproducts of the PhD that you can publish them in conferences or in other papers. Do not have to have them in if it's not necessarily. If that are breaking down the flow and the story of your PhD, please leave them out. Be selective with what you're adding in. Be very accurate and confident with what you're adding. Make sure that whatever you have there are things of great quality, well justified, you have the evidence and if you're asked about, you will be able to give a very good reason. Everything should be backed up with references and the literature review. So you do that throughout the entire PhD. You have the references as these add more confidence to the examiners to understand where you're coming from and how you further developed something. So you also know what is the state of the art. You followed what others have done before and then you take it another step. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have introductions and conclusions at every single chapter. Every chapter should be almost standalone. They will help a lot the transition from one chapter to the other. And of course, someone who comes back to the thesis and he reads only one chapter will try to first go through the introduction and conclusions to see if that is the right chapter to read. Now, when it comes to the introduction, a short paragraph of five, six lines is enough. You don't really have to repeat a lot. And when it comes to conclusions, 
again a short paragraph with the main findings please do not add concluding remarks at that stage so you should not really repeat all the little findings of every chapter so all the numbers or the results just talk about it in a general form so somewhere at the beginning of your phd is very important if you have a flow chart or a tree chart where you are demonstrating the thinking of the phd and how things will be unfolded you don't necessarily have to have the chapters of your phd or again talk about the structure of the thesis but you will have the architecture of the thesis how the thesis was decided to be unfolded i think that's extremely useful for all the examiners to look and to understand what was your thinking behind it i cannot advise you a lot about the technical things because i'm, I'm an engineer i can only advise civil engineer students or or engineers but i definitely recommend you to think a lot about the order of the chapters so you may have done theoretical work computational work experimental field work you need to put them in the right order it's not necessarily that you put the thesis chapters in the order of the works that you have done so perhaps you have uh, done computational work and then you did an experimental work and then you validated your experiments it doesn't have to be that way you can start with experimental work and then you can add your computational work in other words this introduction and conclusion in every chapter it will help that transition be really clear and smooth uh, as always make sure that there is a flow in the thesis and the readers are going through that quite easily and it keeps the interest of the readers high my last recommendation here is to keep the thesis to a decent number of chapters usually about five to seven chapters is good if you are adding many more chapters because you are fragmenting the work i would recommend you to either send a few things in the appendices or add some work together so it needs again a little bit of the thinking of how to organize best your thesis having 10 or 15 chapters is too much put yourself into the examiner's shoes now the second thing is the presentation in most universities you will be asked to do a 5 to 10 15 minutes presentation that must be spot on so now is the time you must get it right i know that you may want to present a lot you may want to present the entire thesis but you don't have to do the time and this is not the right presentation so let's start what you need to include in that presentation first of all you need to say why the topic is so important for the research community and the society as a whole it's not about you it's about the society it's about the topic in this way you set the scenery correct but you do not need to overdo it then present what is the state of the art so make sure that you clearly say what is the knowledge up to date and what the missing knowledge is then break down the main steps of your work and how you will tackle that challenge here you can add some nice pictures some nice graphs and you can show the good quality of the work that you have done unfortunately you do not have time to go through all the work you've done so there is no point of going in detail of every chapter and the main findings of that i would say try to have some pictures perhaps pictures that you haven't included in your thesis but that they have a lot of data so in this way you demonstrate that you have done a lot of work and you have examined a lot of parameters so both the quality and the quantity of the work should be shown here and in this way you will engage and motivate the audience especially if it's an open presentation to other students and other professors and people will understand more about the type of the work that you have done and how hard you have worked all these years at the end be very clear and honest with your phd findings how these advance our knowledge what are the main conclusions how accurate and reliable these are what needs to be done further to really expand on that work a little tip here future knowledge and limitations are two different things so make sure that you refer to both but in a different tone i recommend you to conclude that presentation by including a slide with all the work that you have published so far work which is already submitted under review and plans for future work again do not need to overdo it don't say i will write another 10 papers out of this phd but be realistic you need to show that you are thinking about publishing the work and helping the community that information needs to be there it will be ranked very highly and the examiner will already 
put you at a very beneficial position because he or she knows that you are publishing so your work has been already reviewed has been already accepted is of high standards this is also a very good opening point for discussion so right after your presentation the examiner may pick up those publications and start asking you questions which is a very nice way for transition between the presentation and the actual examination at the end of the day the more time you spend on that presentation and the discussion as a follow-up the better it is for your examination overall because there will be a lot of questions that are clarified at that point without being in that defense mode so all that is to your benefit and since you have time to prepare that presentation make sure you are spot on with this now third thing is the actual viva so what we as examiners were looking to see during that viva of course here we have the technical and the non-technical things and i will speak more about the non-technical things so about the technical the examiners wants to see whether you really appreciate where you are with that thesis so they want to see that you know what the state of the art is as i said before you know what you have done you know how much you have progressed how much you pushed the boundaries of your science and you're really confident and very clear with your findings it is important that you can clearly articulate all the messages to someone at the PhD level. You speak the same language in, in a sort of way. But don't forget that this is not a degree only, it is a title. So the interpersonal and communicational skills are also evaluated and assessed a lot at that point. Consequently, the PhD examiners want to see whether you are indeed a PhD material. So you need to position yourself correctly into the Viva, where you are with your research, what you have done, whether you've created something new, it's novel, how novel it is, what needs to be done in the future. So one of the questions that you may get, and that's a bit tricky, is whether you are really advancing the science in that particular field. So make sure that you have done that question to yourself before, you are very clear with yourself, you are very honest with yourself, you give a pretty good answer and you have it ready for that viva. That will help the examiners to see a lot out of you, not only in terms of technical but non-technical stuff as well. A common mistake that a lot of PhD students are doing, confusing the examiner with the reviewer. So they believe that they are there to get some comments from the reviewers and then correct their thesis. So they start taking notes. So let me clear that out. Note taking is not allowed in a PhD examination. There is plenty of people, PhD supervisor, the examiners themselves, maybe the chair who can take notes and they will give you these notes afterwards. You are there to actually demonstrate that you know what you're doing and you have a reasoning for everything. So spend your time thinking and giving pretty good answers rather than taking notes. The examiners are evaluating the reasoning behind your thinking and this is what you should have in mind all the time. Even if something is a bit weak or it's not justified very well, the thinking behind it is the important part. Overall, I like everyone, you may be a bit nervous and that's absolutely fine. Try to be professional, take your time to give answers and elaborate as much as possible. Do not speak for five minutes for giving an answer because you will show that you don't really know what you're talking about and you're trying to make up an answer. But equally, do not be too short and just say yes or no and a couple of words. You should elaborate further on that response. Be as confident as possible, be as clear and as honest as possible do not speak too fast because you may miss something and do not speak too slow again because you will show that you don't really know what the answer is and you're trying to think too much at the moment and say something you want to be really confident and clear with your answers i would strongly advise you to create a framework in which you can give the answer so for instance you always start with an example or where you start with what was the thinking then you give an example or you demonstrate what you've done and then you give the conclusion so build that framework and try to use that framework for every answer that you're giving okay since you've made it so far i'll give you now my four important tips for the viva tip number one if you haven't got the question you are entitled to ask very politely to the examiner to repeat the question it's not a bad thing you can ask very politely and say can you please repeat the question that will also give you time 
to think about the answer. Tip number two, be confident, but don't be arrogant. So make sure that the way that you present yourself, you position yourself, and the way that you give the answers, it does demonstrate that you are confident, you know what you're saying, and you have worked a lot to gain that knowledge, but you don't really say that I know what I'm doing, I'm the best, nobody else knows, and the way I'm doing it is the best way. I know that at some times it's a bit hard to actually deviate from one to the other, but you need to work out your answers correctly in order to put yourself in the right mode. Tip number three, do not pretend you know the answer if you don't. Just say that I don't know the answer, I haven't looked at that one, or I've looked at it, but it was something that I set aside because it was distracting my PhD, and I know that it is important, but I don't know the answer. If you start making up an answer and you talk for five minutes, definitely you will expose yourself. There will be more followed up questions coming on that, and that will go wrong. Tip number four is a very quick answer that you can say when the examiners are implying that more work needs to be done. So you can say that, thank you very much for the comments, I will put it in a lot of consideration in the future. If you give that answer, most likely the examiner will stop there and will move on to the next question. So the good thing about this answer is that you're not really promising that you will do the work as part of the PhD of the corrections, but it's something important that you will look at it very seriously. So of course, you can use it only once or twice max during the whole Viva, but make sure that if the situation is appropriate, use it and end the discussion at that point so that you can move on with something better. So thank you very much for watching again. Hope you found some good information about how we examiners evaluate and assess PhD students during the VIVA. Let me know your experiences down below in the description and how do you feel you were assessed. The more experiences we have, that will add more value to PhD candidates. Also, if you have any videos explaining your experiences and what you've gone through, feel free to post them down below in the description. I will definitely watch them. I'm sure that more people will watch them and learn about your experience. So with that said, bye bye until next time.